Are you hungry? What do you want? Are you sure? Why? Oh, come on. Well, you want a pork? Oh. Are you starving? Huh? Are you? Welcome to Amateur Redneck Workshop. I'm Harold, and this is part two of three parts of fixing the U2 uh, tool grinder. And uh, as you just saw, that's the result of a, an old lady spoiling a dog. That's all I can say about that. Now the video is, there's a lot more to fixing this thing than I had expected, so I figured on a two-part video, but we're going for a three-part. I can see that. So let's get on with part two and, and see how much we can get done. I thought it'd be good to mark the depth there before uh, before I get really deep in there so that I can <laughs> make it the right size, huh? Well, even a redneck can have a reasonable thought <laughs> every now and then. And I realized cutting this off 20 thousandths at a time here on the lathe was going to take forever, so I took it over on a little grizzly and I cut it down almost to the line there. And now I can put it back in here and do the rest of it and get this perfectly round. Eh, who knew? This particular setup is going to get awful close to these jaws. This one and the one on the other side. And uh, I'm thinking maybe I might just leave this about 50,000 thicker than the other one so I don't cut into my chuck jaws. I think that's what you'd do, huh? Pierre? Hey. Yeah, I thought so. Alright, so we're getting in the neighborhood of where we need to be to be on the mark. And if I don't touch the jaws, I'll be doing good. Hopefully I won't. Pierre say put shims under the thing and get right on down to the mark. So I'm going to let you guys sleep while I think about that. Okay, so that I could bore this hole out to the, to the full size without running into the jaw, I shimmed this jaw here with uh, <laughs> a couple of pieces that got it back. This guy's still resting on the tip of it, but it's not going to cut into it when I bore through. So, the only thing left at this point is just to go ahead and bore this hole to point eight. Uh, I'm gonna plug that right down. Point eight six five six. So that that'll take some doing. We're at nine sixteenths right now, so we got to move on out a lot. And uh, I don't know that you guys need to be bored with watching this because. Most of the time, boring is boring. I do say so myself. It's always good to be feeding toward the object you want to cut. So I'm going to bore on this a while off camera, and then I'll come back when I get down to the, the nitty gritty. All right, I'm right close to it, so I'm trying to sneak up on it. So I'm going to be incredibly paranoid with every cut because I don't want to, I don't want to go too big. And of course I don't want to stop too small. I'm going to put those bearings back in there. I say back in there, they'll put the bearings in there. They've never been in this one, have they?
Let me get a bearing and see if it'll go. Yes, they'll they'll fit in there. A little squeezing, but they'll fit. So that's it. We're through boring. Okay, a little time on the belt grinder, and it's it's all looking like the other one. Fits up tight against it. I think the bearings are going to go in, but we still got to drill some holes and thread some holes, and so it's back to the mill. All right, I used my little arbor press, stuck the bearings in it, and they went in just right. wasn't hard to push or anything. They just slid in, and everything's good there. I put them in now, even though I hadn't painted it, because I didn't want to get paint all on the inside of there and then have to scrape it out so the bearings would fit. I don't know, maybe that's good thinking, maybe not. All right, so I need to mark where I want the slit in the thing, and I've got to mark where the hole is for the little diamond thing. So this is not going to do it. This is going to do it. Okay. So this guy, you can take him and set him like that. And I've made a little mark in the center there. So there we are. Right there. This is where I'll put my hole here. The slit will run up that way. We'll have a hole over here, and of course we'll have a, a roll pin right in here. And I haven't laid those out yet, but I'll have to. It's going to be three quarters of an inch back. Well, I'll just set this uh, guy here and we'll set him on here. So he's going to be right around there. I'm going to finagle it around a little bit here and uh, we'll come back later. Alright, I had to uh, <laughs> move, lay the line across there and then transfer it over so now that should be the center so we got that marked so we got this mark get that mark got the hole marked here so now all I've got to do is put a little center punch or center pop as our English speaking friends call it we'll get there it's almost to the end all right I've zeroed myself right on the top of my mark there and I got a relatively small center drill. I'm just going to make a little ding there and then I'll come along and put the 1 8 inch bit in there. That's what we're going to make is a, a hole for a 1 8 roll pan. Well, I think at the hardware store these days they might call them spring pans. Deeper than the original, but it's all right. There's no specifications. Okay. So, get all that out of the way. Set it up for the next step. You can guys and take a nap. Okay. While you guys were sleeping, I moved the cables back around. You know, I went and I put on X. Yeah, where I read, you know, where does X go? And then I put in YZ because for a redneck that made sense, you know. It was kind of, I think that's the order they taught me the alphabet in. And uh, so that's how I did it. Turns out the guy that built the thing didn't see it like that. All right, so I'm not going to do a center drill here because my, my punch made nice, a nice hole. So go through this little bit and then we'll go through the big one. Now the piece that goes in there measures 310 thousandths. So I'll look around for a 310 thousandths drill bit. 
the uh, the numbered ones don't grow that big. So then I looked in the uh, letter drill bits, and they don't they don't have any of that exact size. So 312 is what I am using, and this isn't fastened down very good as you can see. I need to get a little something to grease it up with. Taking that. Let's try it again. This time I'm gonna have to hang on with my thumb if I'm going to do peck drilling because the upward stroke coming back out. Okay. Here we go with the, the finish size. time just to go right on through without stopping and it worked all right gotta get set up for the next hole all right we'll start this one with a center drill because the surface is on a sort of an angle there I've got my intended slot lined up straight with the uh, vice jaws so that leaves everything else on an angle there and then we'll tap the thing and then I'll use a, a larger bit to go down the right distance to be halfway way down through this thing and then we'll uh, countersink it as well and everything should be lovely all right so I, I moved over here and I ran the drill bit down and touched the vise and zeroed the z-axis so now that I'm back over here all I've got to do is run the z-axis down to zero okay See, I think that's something that even Redneck can do it. I went about 25 seconds to make sure that I had a little pointy tip past the, the center. And it might be more than 25 but when I cut the slot. That ought to make it all just right. Alright, it's time for the threads. I'm not going to power tap it if that's what you're thinking. <laughs> I don't want to take a chance on messing up all the work I've done or anything else breaking the tap, whatever. <laughs> I said clearance hole would probably have guided the tap in straight. But I I've made so many crooked holes free handed that I I'm paranoid now. So we will take that 
and finish it up by hand. No use you washing through all that. Now they uh, they made a, a little countersink here, whatever a, a nice hole for the head of the screw to go down in there. And theirs is a little bit smaller than mine. And I just can't help it because I don't have that size of anything. And I'm going to do something that you're not supposed to do ever, which is I've got an end mill in a in a chuck. So I guess Mr. Peter probably flunked me out of the course right here and now. Um, and I guess I deserve it, but I'm too lazy to go and change out to get to college. Maybe I'll get by with this. Who knows? I don't have to go very deep. That'll do it. Pretty sure that'll do it. All right, so now I've got to figure out where I left my slitting saw. I put it up in a safe place. So I just have to figure out where that was. Well, that's all, folks. Uh, Y'all try to subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Leave a comment if you got something to say. And above all, remember... Keep on keeping on. Bye now.